Greetings and welcome to a new video about analog electronics. We continue with our subjects about the BGT circuits and this is our second example. In this example we'll look at the effect of the beta which is the current gain of the BGT transistor. So we look at the two different values and we'd like to know what the effect is of that change in the beta. Of course we'll look at the calculation step by step and also verify these in the SPI simulations. All right, see, this is the circuit we have given. The, we have two DC voltage sources, VBB and VCC. They are shown here. And we have two resistors, RB and RC. And we also have the transistor parameters, which are the VBE, 0.7 volt, which is this voltage between the base and the emitter. And we have now also the beta, which is 100. Now, we'd like to calculate in the question A, the base current, which is this one the collector current which is in this branch, the emitter current which is in this branch and also the collector emitter voltage. So four unknowns. And we repeat the process in question A for changing the beta from 100 to 200. So this is actually a similar question as in example number one about the BGT circuit. There we change the RC and observe what kind of uh, effect it has on our parameters in the circuit. And this time we'll change the beta. So we'll see also what's happening. And this exact same circuit. So we just use the exact circuit to also compare the effects. So let's look at the solutions. Now, the first one, A, and we have now B dash 100. We can again say the Kirchhoff's voltage law, KVL, at the input loop, so this part. So we can set up the equation there. We can say the VBV, this voltage is equal to that voltage across RB plus the VBE. That's shown here. And the VBE voltage so the across the rb is given by ohm's law the resistor times the ib which is the base current now if i now substitute the given values so the 4 for the vbb the rb is 50k and also the ib which is unknown and i have 0.7 for my vbe now if i now work it out you will get 66 micro amps for ib now then we have assuming this is in the linear region of operation for a bgt we can say for the collector current is equal to the beta times the IB. This is only valid if the transistor is operating in the linear region or active region. Then we can say just 100 times the 66 micro amps and you will get 6.6 .6 milliamps for the current in this branch, which is the collector current. Now the emitter current is the collection of the IB and the, I mean the emitter current is the collection of the IB and IC, or we can say beta plus one times the IB so if you now do 100 plus 1, so 101 times the 66 microamps, you will get 6.666 milliamps. That's for the currents. Now the voltage for the VCE, this is the voltage we want to know. So from this node to that node, then you need the output loop. So the Kirchhoff's current law, but at the output loop. We set it up again, VCC is equal to the voltage across RC plus the VCE. That's shown here, and again, they're using Ohm's law for the voltage across RC. And if I now substitute the values here, or let's first express the VCE, you'll get VCC minus the RC times IC. Now, when we now substitute the values given here in this example, you will get 5.7 volts for this case. Okay. Let's now move to question B and then repeat the process, but then just changing the beta from 100 to 200. So everything is the same, only this change. So beta is 200. Now we assume again linear region of operation. That means I can use IC is equal to beta times IB. This is a linear uh, operation. So IC is multiplied by some constant value and the base current is then multiplied by the beta and will then produce the IC. Now, IB doesn't change because this expression here is not dependent on beta. So we can just copy that from question A. So that's 66 microamps. But then we have that the new value for IC will be the new beta 200 times the 66 microamps. That will give you give us 13.2 milliamps. In a similar case, we have also a different value for IE because the beta has changed from 100 to 200, so you'll get 201 times 66 microamps. So you'll get 13.266 milliamps. So these are the changes. So that, that's what we have observed. We also know that since IC is changing, we can also say the VCE is changing because this expression has the IC in it. So 
then we get a new value for the VCE, which is 2.4 volts. So those are the changes. There's also a way to look at it in, in a very nice way, which is a graph. This is called the pink line, here's the load line. So you can see two extreme values, this one all the way in the top, and here all the way in the bottom, the cross section actually, or uh, the intersection between the y axis and the horizontal axis, x axis. This is the case where the VCE is zero. This is actually shown here. This is the VCE uh, line, and this is the IC, the current collector current line. If VCE is, is zero, that means this voltage is zero, everything from VCC is across RC. That means then eight this 9 volts over 500 ohms, that's actually shown here, this expression will give you 18 milliamps. That is in the ideal case, ideal case, the maximum possible collector current. Of course, this is a little bit smaller, so we have seen in the previous video that this 0 0.2 volt is really required for the saturation region and up to the linear region. But in the ideal case, it is 18 milliamps now. Now, in the other one is the ideal cutoff, that means there is no current actually injected in the transistor to operate actually as an opus, uh, as the conduction here. Then we have that the VCE is 9 volts completely, because then the IC is 0, because the current here for the IB is 0. And that's shown here. So we have then two intersections, that we can then draw a linear line here, and we can connect them together. Then we see two points, the A and B. So this point here is what we have determined for the situation where beta is 100. That is the 5.7 volts, the VC that's shown here, and also 6.6 .6 milliamps that's shown here for the IC. But when we move up with our beta from 100 to 100, the VC is going to 2.4, that's this one, and the IC was changed to 13.2. So there is not nice to see what's really happening. So it's actually shifting to the left side. And if I increase beta further, let's say to 300 or 400, I will go in that direction and I'll reach the, the saturation region, which is then the boundary. So this is really nice to see what's happening actually in this form. But let's also see that in the summary and also make more plots. This is now the summary and the beta is 100 and 200. You can see the situation for the base current the collector current, the emitter current, and also the collector emitter voltage. Everything is actually changing except the base current because that is not dependent on the beta. So this loop here is just doing its own uh, job without any effect of the beta. But the collector current is dependent on beta, emitter current also, and also collector emitter voltage. So everything is changing because of this change in beta. So we can say the effect of variation in beta, base current is unchanged, but the collector current, emitter current, and also the collector emitter voltage are changed. This is of course important because we don't want the collector current and also the collector emitter voltage changing where uh, if the parameters of the transistors are changed because of, let's say, temperature or any other effect like, like aging. So this is kind of an important thing and we will discuss this later in great detail in future videos. Okay, let's now look at uh, another plot, this is a really important plot for beta as 100. We, you saw this load line, this pink line in the previous discussion, previous slide. Again, we have this, and you also have this blue line, which is the characteristics for this specific transistor circuit, where IB is 66 microamps. And you can see here the, uh, the uh, intersection. This line is sort of a constant current. You see the 5.7 volts for the VCE and also this current of 6.6 .6 milliamps. Now, if we now go to another one, which is then this curve, you can see the current is still the same for IB, but the collector current has increased from 66.6 .6 to 30.2. So this is a different way of looking at the situation where you have in this region, the linear region of operation, this is cutoff and this is the saturation. So the blue line is again the characteristic of the current, the collector current as a function of the VCE change. And this is for beta is 200. Okay. Let's also look at the simulation results. That's also very important. This is the first one where you have the beta is 100. I've measured this in spice and add actually here or adjusted the beta to 100. 
You can see the value 66 micro, 66 micro, very close to that. 6.6 .6 milli, also 6.6 .6 milliamps here. 6.666 milliamps, so very close to that one, also of an emitter. And this is 5.7 approximately, also what we have calculated. So very good, very, very close to what we have just calculated. For the second one, that's this part, the right side for the beta S200. You can see this is also close to 66 micro, so it is not really changing. But the collector current is 13.2 milliamps. In our case, it's 13.14 milliamps, also very close to what we have calculated. You see here 13.266 milliamps. This is also 13.21 milliamps, also very close to what we have calculated. What you also see is the collector emitter voltage, which is 2.4. This is here 2.43, let's say 2.43 volts. So also very close to what we have calculated. So the error is very small. That is due to really the actual model of this transistor, which is, of course, not only the beta, but there are also parameters we haven't uh, considered in our simple model. But it is very close, so we can say this is really uh, in a good, good agreement with our calculations, so the simulations are verified, or the simulation has verified our calculations. All right, guys, this is for our second example, showing the effect of the beta in this BGT transistor circuit. We will move on in the next uh, examples, in the next videos about the BGT circuits, looking at other effects and also more stable biasing. Because I already told that the collector current and the VCE, the collector emitter voltage, are really important for fixed biasing. So we will come to, back to that in more detail later. If you have any questions, comments about this exercise, please let me know and I will try to answer them as soon as possible. See you next time in another video. Take care.